Hey, I'm John. Welcome to Mr. G's Workbench. Uh, last episode, we left off with uh, this part of the F5 done, the nose and cockpit area. And uh, today we're going to endeavor to put these two halves together. So today I'm going to tell you what I did to get this far that I didn't do on camera. And then we're going to try and get these two halves together. At the end of this episode, hopefully we've got uh, an F5 fuselage and we can look at it and, and decide what we think about it. All right. So let's jump right into it. Now from the really annoying engineering section of building a Kitty Hawk model, I'm going to show you. I installed this one gear bay already. All right. Not bad. But it doesn't have to be such a nuisance. You're installing, first of all, you have to make these boxes for the gear bays. All right, like always, they just kind of have these like keys that hold, you know, to slot them together and then you got to keep them square. Then when you go to install it, all they give you to install it on is a little ridge. Like if you gave me this robust box, right? Why couldn't you give me a robust ridge to fit it in with? So you kind of have to get it in, get the, uh, get the edge to line up, and then hold this all in place, and then glue it in before it slips out of place. So I just wanted to pass that little rant along. It wouldn't be a, a Kitty Hawk kit if I didn't rant about something. So. There we go. So let's jump in with this rear fuselage half that I've completed. I didn't do this on camera, and to be quite honest, I was getting a little impatient working on it. So what I did was, the order I did this in was, I built the, the two gear bays here. Uh, you really just got to kind of do it by eye and glue them in one at a time. Once you get these two gear bays in, then you can put in these two uh, speed brake bays. These are single piece uh, parts, so you can butt them up against the, the back wall of the, well, the front wall of these gear bays here after you get these installed. Once you get those done, you build up the two engines. Uh, there's not much to see there. Uh, here's a couple of pictures of the engines. Uh, when I was building them, they're terrible. Uh, you're better off just putting some kind of exhaust covers over the back because uh, the they Kitty Hawk has molded the tabs that that hold the two halves of the engines together, exposed in the engine bay. Uh, why they did that, it uh, yet another Kitty Hawk mystery. Nothing we can do about it. I don't think you're going to see very much of it anyway, unless you shine a flashlight up there. So what I've done is I've just painted them uh, burnt iron, and then once you install the uh, exhaust cans over the top, you're definitely not going to see very much in there. So I built the two engines, I installed them. There's obviously no trunking at all in here. Kitty Hawk hasn't given you any kind of intake trunking. I'm not doing that right now. I, I'm gonna try to do some FOD covers for it. So now what I've done is I, I put the top half and the bottom half together after the engines were installed. And then I proceeded to rescribe and re-rivet every rivet and line on the fuselage. You definitely have to redo the rivets. They're of, of varying depths. This was the same problem they had on the MiG-25 if you go back and look at that one. So I've got that together. I've got everything re-riveted. Uh, I've sanded down. The, the two halves, if you do it carefully, the two halves will go together well. I was happy with the way these came together. Now what I've done here is I've, I've cut and this was another suggestion from, from Chuck's build on large scale planes, which again, I will link in the description here. Uh, these tabs are gonna help me to, to kind of locate everything when I go to do that. I've put, you can see I've put four here and I've put four here. That's because all they give you to connect the front and back halves is this little lip here. All right, that's, that's unacceptable. So what I plan to do is use these tabs to help me get everything located. I'm gonna run some extra thin all the way around. I'm gonna try to get a good bond and then I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna cover that, that seam with uh, CA. I'm gonna use the CA to both bond it and as a filler. And then I'm gonna go back and sand off the, hopefully get rid of a majority of that, that seam that won't show. 
So we'll do that and let's see what we have next. So this is where I'm currently at. Now I've, I've run some uh, B to CA over the joint that was here. And I've sanded it and sanded it. Uh, I checked it with ink and re-sanded it. The line you see here is, uh, I think that's just a shadow at this point. Uh, there, was, there was ink in that, uh, in that slot when I applied the CA. So uh, all the way around, a beta thick CA, and then I used some accelerator to get it to harden up. Uh, I let it dry overnight, which probably was like making my, my job a little more difficult. If you can as, if you can sand this as soon as it's dry to the touch, you're probably going to be better off. Uh, I think that's how, how Chuck did it on large scale planes. Because uh, when I sanded this, man, I was banging on this for the better part of an hour and a half to get this back down to where it, it you know, matched the contour. And then I re-scribed, re-riveted. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's, it's the best I can do. Especially down here, I, I, uh, I sanded that, that seam flat, and then uh, uh, what I did was I started rescribing lines this morning, and I probably should have had a second cup of coffee before I did it, because I actually started to rescribe the seam. And I, like, I realized that halfway through, like, what am I doing? So I had to go back, reapply CA. By the way, the fit down here is not very good. Uh, there was a step. I still feel the step slightly, but uh, I've, I've sanded, filled, uh, refilled, and sanded again. So that's as good as it's getting for me. The only thing I got left to do here is I, I applied some more putty in, on the sides here where the uh, windshield piece met up with the frame of the nose. So I've done that again. I'm going to go back and sand that down. And then the next thing is going to be uh, the wings, I believe. I think we'll do the wings next. Uh, I'd like to get this to the point that I can, I can start throwing some primer on it. Still haven't figured out how I'm masking around this insanity over here. I'm probably going to just tape off the arms and then try to apply something over the top. So we'll see how that works out. All right, so let's keep going. Moved ahead in the assembly uh, phase a little bit here. I wanted to put the tail together to see what I'm, I'm up against. So it's three pieces. You've got, you've got this section here of the tail as one piece. You've got the rudder. And then for reasons known only to the engineers at Kitty Hawk, this panel on the other side of the tail is a separate piece. So and it, like you could have just made two halves already and it would have been easier to, to put together and, and clean up. But now you get this nice seam right here. I filled it with CA. I'm going to put some accelerator on it. And then I get to sand that down and, uh, and then rescribe and re-rivet it because Kitty Hawk. So let me get that done and then we'll start on the wings. So here's where we're at. The, the tail. I've filled that, that line with CA and sanded it flat. So hopefully under a coat of primer that'll look okay. Checked all my uh, my work. I also went back and rescribed and re-riveted everything like I've been doing as I've been going along, as suggested by Chuck. I've installed this here, and now I've I've inserted some CA right into that join there, which again another unexplained, unnecessary seam. So I filled that on both sides. So we're waiting for that to dry. While that dries, I've started on the wings. And uh, looks like the way to go here if you're following along in the instructions and you're up on, on step 19, we're not going to install any of this landing gear stuff right now. We're just going to install the, the gear bay walls. So you got A34. 37 and 26 and I think the easiest way to install them is going to be into into the area here on the lower wing you install them securely and then you put these two pieces together so if you're using the inner pylons you're gonna to have to punch out those two holes 
the holes for the other pylons are already open. I'm not using either one, so I'll be closing those holes up with some styrene rod when I'm done. So let me get a little further along and then I'll show you how things look. Here we are, skipped ahead a little bit, wings are installed. What I've also done is I've installed the leading edge slats, uh, have them slightly, just slightly depressed. Uh, I think that's a natural look for them. Uh, not severely down like in, a, like in an A4 where they're not mechanical and they just sag when the plane isn't in flight. The next thing I want to do is I want to install the uh, the ailerons and the, I don't know what they're called, I guess they're all ailerons. Now the harder ones to do are going to be the small outer ones, which are A8 and A9. Make sure you use the right one on each one. Uh, tip from me, learn from my experience, those two little tabs at the front that are going to locate into holes in the wings, trim them back about halfway. All right, gives you a little bit more play and then uh, where these uh, piano hinge uh, moldings are, just go in and clean out in between each one with a, a hobby knife to make life a little simpler. And then what you can do is, I would do this first, because this one is the harder one to locate. Kind of get, get the hinges to mesh, get that in, and just give it a good push. And I think they should be sagged slightly, so that's what I'm going to do. If I can get that to stay in, there it is. I'm going to try and jump on that. Slather some Tamiya Extra Thin into those slots in the hinges. And naturally, I also rescribed and re-riveted the, uh, the flaps, well, the flaps, the, uh, the slats, and the ailerons. The last thing to put in are the larger ones. These will go right in. They're going to be up in the neutral position, and they stay pretty well. I didn't have to do anything to those tabs, so just run some extra thin in there. There's one wing, there's the top, there's the bottom. One of the more painless parts of this build. So there you have it. And then the next thing we'll put on are I gotta put the missile rails on, and then we're gonna move towards the back, and I got a couple observations to make there. So one last look at where we're gonna leave off. We're ready for primer. I put the uh, install the antenna up here. Uh, the missile rails are on with the uh, there's like a piece of photo etch in there. Those are in. The ex the actual exhausts are not in. I'll discuss that in a minute. I got the cockpit taped off. I've installed the, ce the center line pylon uh, mainly because I felt that uh, uh, I'm better off doing it now. Uh, gave me a chance to, to putty the gaps. I, I sanded these to, they, they had, I, I don't know if they had a slight curve to them and the fuselage didn't or vice versa. Either way, I got it sanded so that they made it up as best as I could get it. And then I, uh, I puttied the uh, remaining gaps. I've closed the two gear doors here because they're closed on the ground. Uh, there's very few pictures showing them open, probably only open for maintenance. Uh, they were difficult to close because they, they have piano hinges. I'm not happy with how this looks. Uh, I had to putty these. I puttied and sanded them. I'm not happy with my own handiwork, and I'm not happy with the fact that 
uh, you know, once again, Kitty Hawk does things so that if you don't leave everything open the way they want it, it's it's difficult to assemble. So that's where we're at. The flaps, the ailerons, the slats, they're all on and we're going to be ready for paint. The exhausts, you get the resin ones that are provided in the kit or you can assemble uh, these from uh, parts in the, in the kit. Uh, here's a close-up of what they look like. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think either one is a good option, but I'm going to use the resin ones because they at least have a little more detail on them. So we're going to use those. I've got the horizontal stabilizers done. They're uh, also rescribed and re-riveted. So we'll paint those when we paint. I've done the centerline tank. Uh, I assembled that, sanded it, rescribed it. Uh, that's good to go. That's going to be uh, international orange. It'll be interesting. I've got the uh, air brake doors. They're ready to go. I've got the main gear doors ready to go. So uh, that's where we're at. All right, I'm too lazy to turn the camera around so that you got a nicer background to look at. You can look at the back wall today. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, if you've got it geared down, the, the center gear doors should be closed on the ground. That's B21 and B22, along with uh, the little half doors, B13 and B14. Uh, close them up. Uh, have fun doing it too, because like everything else, like I mentioned, uh, if you're going out, you know, off plan and not having everything open the way they're listed in the instructions, you got to work at it. And that, like I said, I'm not happy with the appearance of the uh, of the gear doors, but I, I, I've got them cleaned up as much as I can get them. Nobody's really going to see them once it's sitting on its gear legs. So there's that. Uh, and oh, when you're doing that, if you're closing those doors up. Go back to steps 11 and 12. Do not install uh, parts B10 and B11. They interfere with the, uh, the closure of those doors. So leave them out. The arrestor hook has two parts to it. The instructions, and I'll show you the instructions here. The instructions only show you B8 as the uh, arrestor hook. Uh, it's actually B8 and the hook itself is B6. It's right next to it on the parts tree. So just don't forget to take it off it only goes on one way where it looks right, so I think it'll be pretty obvious. Uh, you also need to check your references. Parts B12 and B37, which are on the underside, that's, uh, that's this right here. I believe that's uh, electronic countermeasure or a chaff pod or something. Uh, check your references, make sure that the plane you're building actually had it. So. Uh, that's that's the uh, stuff to be careful of in this particular segment. Uh, again, uh, I showed you the uh, difference between the provided resin uh, exhausts, which aren't anything to write home about, and the kit parts that you got to put together. Uh, I think there's a, a one of the aftermarket companies might be ResKit. I think is coming out with an exhaust for the F5. I wish it was out right now because I would definitely use it. I would pay. To have a better quality one. Uh, the other thing I didn't do, which uh, I constantly refer back to Chuck Sawyer's build, is he actually went to the trouble of putting, uh, I believe he used Archer raised rivets in the back here where it's going to be natural metal. Um, yeah, if you want it, if you want to take it to the next level like his kit, definitely do that. Um, I'm running out of gas on this. It's like like every one of these stupid kits. Uh, I really want to build an F5. I really want an F5 in my display case, especially an Austrian one. Um, but if I start bogging myself down, uh, that'll be a couple of days of me cutting strips or rivets uh, to install. So hard pass for me on that this time around. Um, I'll be happy if, if I come up with a, a presentable F5 at the end. So that's where that's at. So next time around, like I said, primer and paint. Uh, I've got 279 subscribers as of today. Thank you all very much for uh, supporting me. I appreciate it. Uh, thank you all for the, the comments and the input. I've had a lot of great questions in the last couple of weeks. I'm more than happy to answer them and um, kind of provide my, my insight, whatever that may be limited to. 
uh, like I said, I, I consider myself an average model builder, just like you know I think a lot of you guys are too. I try to enjoy it, and I hope that I pass that enjoyment on to you as well. So uh, thank you again to 279 subscribers. And if you're not subscribed, why not? 70% uh, of you guys are not subscribed that watch these videos. And if you're watching them all anyway, subscribe and get notified, okay? You can just click on the, the subscribe button, ring the bell, and get notified every time I make a new video. Uh, also, uh, if you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you don't like the video, feel free to give me a thumbs down, but do me the, uh, do me the pleasure of at least explaining your thumbs down. So far, every, every time I've gotten thumbs down on a video, no one's left a, a, a critique of it, and I'm, I'm more than open to critique of, of my work, so feel free. Uh, don't forget to check out uh, my Instagram account. That's my Instagram handle. Uh, you can contact me also by email, Mr. G's Workbench at gmail.com. Uh, I also have a Facebook page to for everybody to be able to share. You want to post a picture of a, a build you did, you can do it there. If you can't, email me and let me know. But as far as I know, um, the Facebook page, Mr. G's Workbench, is uh, it's open for uh, for posting by anybody. So until next time. Thanks again for stopping in and see you then.